Are we live yet? What's up with Facebook? How y'all doing out there on this Thursday? I know some of y'all call it a tacky Thursday. Some of you call it a throwdown Thursday. But to the ears, what it is, crew, it's a terrific Thursday. And y'all know how we always bring it on the ears, what it is, show. To all you snows, crows, tacos, Fritos, Oreos, and we still got some for you weirdos. Just don't be no faker, shaker, or a candlestick maker. Because like my boys from South Circle say, y'all, it's a new day out there. And y'all know we on season two. So we say, Uno's dose. Who y'all love the most? Said it's the is what it is show. With them boys straight off that north side. He ain't here tonight, but we got the cuz. Bub love. He's somewhere riding a bicycle. Then I got my boy TJ. And after TJ, y'all know I got my number one dog, Bruce. And y'all, we got a special guest for y'all tonight. Boy, coming all the way from Beaumont, Texas, gonna tell us about what he got going on. And y'all know what they say. Hotel, motel, holiday in. And if your girl start acting up, y'all better take her friend. Cause ice cold wine still make you feel fine. Ice cold beer still make you wanna cheer, and ice cold duck still make you wanna hush your mouth rib. And y'all know it's the Corona shot dance still. Get us up out of here, TJ. Real, real, man. Oh, that is man. A classic <laughs> intro. That yes, might be sir. one of the finest that we've come in on. Yes, sir. Uh, he must be sipping on that Pappy Mason because he's going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with it all, my people out there, fellas? What's going down with it? Oh, man. Much done, man. They said it. it's a new day <laughs> with the ears, what it is, crew, and what monkey just don't stop no show around here. <laughs> Fellas, I want to I want to chime in first off and say uh, good evening to everyone. Good Welcome evening. in, everyone, checking uh, us out out there on Facebook and YouTube. We're going to sit down and we're going to have some fun tonight. We got a very special uh, guest, as the Rev mentioned. But uh, I want to give uh, the Rev, B-Dub, and Buddy Love a shout out to an excellent interview that they did two weeks ago with uh, wow. our former classmate, former NFL player Bertrand Berry. Yes, that was sir. awesome. Shout out to Bert for joining with us. It was great. He's uh, trying. It was, up, baby. it was different for me to be able to see it from the other side of not being a part of the show, man. It was an excellent show. Y'all did a tremendous job. Appreciate it. And that, I want to shout out Buddy for the content we had last week's show. Uh, and prayers and much love to the Shaw family. That was an outstanding uh, interview and prayers to Miss Shaw. She's going on with her battle with cancer. So I just wanted to throw that out at the beginning of the show today, fellas. We're going we're gonna to fix that. We're going to say Miss Sam. So, yes. Sam. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> Other than that, how y'all week been this week, fellas? Man, Everything. it's been good. Good, 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 man. Good, good, good. You know what, man? Before we get sidetracked, Bruce, come on, y'all pop these lids and let's have a word of prayer. Right, everybody. Well, Father God, we're coming. Thank you, Father God, for blessing us this year and every evening, allowing us to congregate as we do. Uh, we thank you, Father God, just for the blessing of being uh, able to still function throughout the day. Father God, we ask that you cover those who are in need right now. We don't know everybody's needs or desires, but we ask you, Father God, that you would cover them and keep your hands up around them and, and, and just cover them with the blood of Jesus. We pray as we ask you to send Jesus now. Amen. 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 All right. B Dub, they so uh make sure you do a tech quick testing one, two, testing one, two on your audio. One, two, one, two, one, two. Can you hear me? Good stuff. We got you. We got you. We got you. 
Want to shout out Yvonne hanging out with us tonight. Hello to you. Hey. Miss Yvonne, Miss Yvonne, how you doing this evening? We got to give a shout out to AJ, man. I don't know if y'all seen AJ, man, uh, Anthony Jr., which is Yvonne's son, uh, on uh, Facebook uh, doing bad practice. Hey, man, he was, he was putting some putting some, some, some sin on that ball, man. He was putting it out the ball, giving it some good licks. Great hand and eye coordination. Tell AJ to keep it up and look forward to coming checking him out before the years are right, right, right on. I see yeah. my uncle out there, Uncle B Dub. What's up <laughs> with? I see your <laughs> uncle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bro. But but hey, we 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 ain't gonna waste no more time. I want to go ahead and get our guests in here, man. But I got a question for you fellas. It's a it's a threesome tonight. We you know we missing buddy, but we doing the threesome. So that's try. What do you fellas know about the golden triangle? Oh man, I know quite a bit about the golden triangle. That's actually where um, I was supposed to attend college at, man, at Lamar University, but uh, decided it wasn't for me and what the opposite was. Let let the let let the, the viewers know what three cities that the golden tri golden triangle is comprised of. That comprised of Beaumont, Orange, and Port Arthur. Absolutely, and our guest tonight is I like to call him and refer to him as a golden triangle legend on these Texas basketball courts. Starting off with his career down there in Beaumont at Westbrook High School, making his transition to the collegiate and to the professional rankings. But, you know, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time telling you about this young man because I want him to be able to talk to us about himself. Tonight, we're bringing on special guest, Omar Sneed. What's up with it out there again, my boy, Omar Sneed, just in the door. And we said, for he is here. <laughs> he going to tell up? us his basketball career about Beaumont, the Golden Triangle, and all of that. So, Omar, welcome to this is what it is show. You better tell them to get their mind right. Yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, bro. Appreciate y'all oh, having me on. Get your mind right. <laughs> Welcome in, Omar. We definitely appreciate having you with us. What's up with it, big homie? What's up? Not much, man. I appreciate y'all, man. I'm sure you know. Man, I'm ready to get ready to get active. Hey, That's we good. appreciate you taking some time out of your evening from your family and whatnot. And also, we want to send them a shout out to Miss Wanda, you know, and the kids and everybody. Hey, how y'all doing? Yeah, yeah, they all in it. They doing whatever it is they doing. <laughs> What's up, man? Gotta send a shout out to Robin Sneed too, man. Tell Robin, say what's up, man. Man, we'll do, man. She's mom's birthday tomorrow, so we'll all be together tomorrow, man. Um, happy, happy birthday from the is what it is, crew. Then, yeah. please, for us. Tony Parker, how you doing this evening? <laughs> yes, yes. So, so Omar, jumping right into it. So we mentioned the Golden Triangle. You know, we talked about Beaumont, where you're from, Port Arthur, and Orange. When I say those areas or those cities, what, what does that mean to you as someone that grew up in that region? Um, it's like the it's, it, to me, it's like the the area that's kind of that's kind of slept on, you know, um, like the underdog area. You know, we put out a lot. We produce a lot of talent, man, and everything. But you notice whenever boys get on or whatever. It's always looked at as the greater Houston area. You know what I mean? You never really and the and the one thing about Beaumont and I tell people this all the time. My biggest thing when I came up, when you announced me or when you know a paper come out at Greater Houston, nah, I'm from Beaumont. Yeah. You know, cause cats from Port Arthur, they're gonna let you know they're from Port Arthur. Exactly. They call it the trio. You know what I'm exactly. saying? I don't even I don't, I don't really use I don't use the word because I'm not from Port Arthur. I got family from Port Arthur, long time homeboy from Port Arthur, but I'm from Beaumont. So I don't, you know what I'm saying? So the Golden Triangle, the 409, man, I mean, we, you know, we put our hits all the time, you know, but we don't really, we don't voice where we from. So in my career, I've always made sure people knew I was from Beaumont. Sure, sure. Speak, speaking of your career, when you think back, you know, to your days as far as being a shorty, um, what what initially led you to athletics as well as basketball? Uh, 
Well, it was a couple of things, man. First of all, you know, when you the when you the fat freckle face gap two kids, you ain't getting a lot of action, man. You know what I mean? You ain't, you ain't getting too much action. Uh, you don't, know, don't, you, don't forget them damn feet either. I, I was just about to get to that. I was trying to get to that before you did. But once again, you beat me to the punch. You know, oh, you, man, know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You walking around 13 with a size 13, man. You, 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 you different, you know? And so, um, play football, and I was pretty decent at football and all that, but just basketball was something that we always played in our neighborhood. I always had a basketball goal, always in the backyard. You know, you kill the grass, uh, yeah. then, you know, you get the dirt, the dog tied over there, the ball rolling, and the dog mess, you wipe it off and get back at it with no hand sanitizer. Ball go over the fence, you jump the fence, neighbor pit bull over there, you hurry up and get it before you get bit. You know, the hood yeah. chronicle, man. You know, we didn't all went there, and that's what and that's what made it. So once I got that ball in my hand and I became decent with it, well then here comes the attention. You come your first girlfriend. Now you went from don't touch me to now you cute, you know. So hey man, I just hey, I kinda I, I dug it. So I just I, I took off with it. That's that's enough of y'all. Being being from the greater Beaumont, Fort Arthur, Golden Triangle area, um, who are some of the the earlier athletes that inspired you to actually stick with basketball? Oh uh, man, and see, you know, here's another thing, like Beaumont's so rich, man. Like it's a lot of cats that never, that you guys would never know. Which I'm pretty sure it's a lot of cats from y'all city that we would yeah. never know, that just yeah. never made it. But um, just to name a few, man, it has a little. It's a uh, my brother played at Beaumont Central, which his name was Robert Sneed. I looked up to him, but his point guard Perry Hill, real mm-hmm. short, butterball. Cat used to kill cats. He went yeah. to uh, I think he finished finished at Mississippi Valley State. Uh, okay. To this day, like that's that's like my OG man. I I looked I looked up to him. Um, he he raised me. You know, Perry Hill was very instrumental into my career. Um, we had uh, uh BB Davis who paved the way. Um, of course, Big Luke Jackson that went to Syracuse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Frank Middleton, which was a football player. And yep. Frank was two years older than me, man. And I and um, you know, Frank it was a JUCO kid that a lot of you know people, teachers, thought that he wasn't gonna make it because of some things in high school. And the cat ended up getting to the NFL, going to Arizona. And man, I always looked up to the dude. You know, I always looked up to his work ethic, and he always played the game like an animal. And so I always said to myself, like, that's kind of like who I wanted to be in terms of the way I did things. So, yeah. you know, I had those guys, man, park legends like Miles that's, that's, that that passed away, man. I, me, myself, man, I'm a collaboration of a whole lot of different spirits. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's what's up, man. Shout out to all those gentlemen's names that he mentioned, man. Yes, we're right. yes, we're right. gone. Uh, we just want to acknowledge, you know what I'm saying, the past of, of, of my homeboy, my boy Omar Sneed, and, and what, uh, what inspired him to be who he is today. All right, so so we we gonna jump into uh, the the beat up your did you know, uh, and what we're gonna do when we come back from that, Omar, we want to talk a little bit about uh, life and times as far as Beaumont Westbrook, and then we'll jump into San Jacinto as well as Memphis State. Okay, cool. <laughs> good evening, good people. Good evening, good people. On this day. On this day in history, whether you guys know it or not, uh, September 2nd, 1969, it was somewhat regard of the birth of the Internet. Uh, there was a uh, connection between two computers uh, with a 14-foot cable that transferred data. So that was the first time we experienced anything looking for the future called the Internet. Know your history, because it is what it is. Rev, you know you knew that? Nope. <laughs> I didn't either. So we learned something tonight. Right. Appreciate that, V Dub. That was nope. excellent. All right. Oh. Yes, sir. Beaumont Westbrook, man. One of the things that I noticed when I was preparing for this interview is 
your sophomore year, man, you did something that you know, and, and I and I and I have to, you know, I apologize, but I'm gonna have to include you in the Houston area as far as the research that I did. You know, I threw I threw Beaumont in the Houston area and uh 32 points a game your sophomore year, you know, and one of the things that I said is that you're a golden triangle legend. But when I looked at some of the names after I did my research, I said you're a Texas high school legend as well. So as far as the greater Houston area is concerned, not sure if you are aware of this, but you probably are. That is fifth all time as far as a scoring average per game in one season. And so that puts you in the category with Texas high school. I call it royalty with names yeah. like Tech Minor out of Booker T. Washington. Elmer yeah, Bennett out of Houston Bel Air, uh, Huey Smith back in the seventies from Houston Lincoln, uh, also Gerald Green from Gulf Shores Academy, and yeah. uh, you rank right there with all of them as far as points per game. And so, sophomore was that your first year on varsity? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, wow. how did you just come in just killing like that? I mean, who were y'all playing against? What was y'all doing? Man, shoot, to be honest with you, bro, I just I didn't know. You know, I think that was the best thing that I didn't know. Hell, I was just hooping. My, my first varsity game was against Huntsville at the, at the at the house, and I remember it being packed. And, like, I pretty much, like, hyperventilated, man, and then I probably finished with, like, 10. Because, you know, and the deal about it was everybody was expecting me to be like Luke. Because, you know, Luke put on the show, man. He, he jumping yeah. over the room. And I, was, and I wasn't that type of player. So no. once I found my niche, like I remember us playing Paul Arthur Lincoln at uh at Westbrook. They beat us. Pack. It was crazy, you know, because they didn't like nobody liked no Bomb on Port Arthur. Nobody liked nobody. And um I dropped 26. And you know, they bumping, I'm bumping, they I ain't born the curve, you know. And uh after the game, you know, it shake my hand. It was like major love. We, I had a mutual friend named Chucky Frijay. Chucky passed away. He was from Port Arthur, but his dad lived in Beaumont. So his senior year, he came to Beaumont. So that that was the cat that uh, Bumby said we used to be eight deep off the Chucky crib. He was talking about that guy. And so uh, Chuck kind of took me under his wing. And, man, I just took off from there. And it's crazy because I was telling my PE class about that today. I was telling them about, like, you know, they complain. I'm like, yo, a true champion, he count the reps when they start burning. Everybody started at one. This one, it just makes you normal. And, man, we was playing five in and five out. So I wasn't even playing a whole game at that time. But when you just don't have no agenda, man, and you just out there playing, having fun with the game and doing the best you can, that's the type of stuff that happens. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, man. And then, and then, as I as I continue to do research, you know, uh, throughout the remainder of your high school career, and then as you transition into college, I started calling you a walking double double. I mean, everything that I started looking at was averages as far as double digits when it came to scoring, and also when it came to rebounding. And it seems like as you obviously transition to the college ranks, um, when you look at your size as far as your height and being able to do what you were able to do under the goal. Um, what, 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 you know, when you think of rebounding, that's, that's the hard work. That's the hard part of the game. So what do you think led to your dedication to be the type of rebounder that you were at your size going against people that were a lot taller than you? Well, first thing first, man, you know, I, I said, you know, you playing at the parks in the back and in the backyards and stuff, man, you know, you, your, your pivot game crazy because you got to pivot to get your shot off without traveling or, Somebody tying you up and calling first because they don't know what first is these days. Yeah. You know, all this stuff. Then, then I second. Got all about first. <laughs> I got all about first. You know what I'm saying? I got all about first, man. You know, they forgot about it, man. You know. Double OG, double OG in here tonight. <laughs> you well, call first. Man. That, that word right there, you start some fights, though, boy. I was just about to say that you call first. Yeah, I, 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 I was just shot, man. 
I I tell you, big homie, you when you said that, I said back in marinade. <laughs> oh man, God. Yeah, that's, that's the, I mean, you know, that's the day. Did the second thing, man. I ain't even. I'm man, I'm just no cap, man. Straight up, and I see, I, I ain't never passed the ball. I never was taught how to. So I was shooting with two and three people and bully my way, miss it, get the rebound, put it back up for you look up. Hell, 29 and 17. Half of them was the shots that I'm – no, bad basketball. I look back at <laughs> some old films, and now that I'm a coach, I'm like, oh, ugh, what kind of shot was that? <laughs> oh, but like you even say, you, you a radic, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were ready. Just crazy stuff, man. Like, you know. But the but I think and I and I tell kids this today, man, it, it all starts with the mentality because you know, back then in high school, if you the tallest kid, it don't matter if you six two, man, you in that hole. You know, oh, yeah. they they didn't spend a lot of time working on your game, you know, and all this and this. So man, you kinda had to get it how you live. So um, even in JUCO, you know, uh, oh, Bruce yeah. would tell you, man, we had a 6'10", but he was from oh, yeah. New York. That yeah. man want to sit out there and handle that thing. Well, shit, I got to go to the hole, yeah. you know. Now, when I get to college, it's like you got to transition to the three, but, man, I got two years left. So yeah. it's hard for me to transition. So I just want to win. So, you know what I'm saying? I ain't selfish. So, man, I'm going to put me back in that hole. And because I just want to win, I'm gonna let the chips fall where they may. So, in other words, what you're saying, uh, they I know they don't know what I'm about to say, but in other words, what you're saying, uh, is it was a blessing when we showed up my freshman year in college. Then. Oh, hey, look, let me say this. Let me go ahead and just put this all the way out there. Okay, my fresh my freshman year before y'all came, man, I, I, you know, I got some brothers off that team. I got some people, you know how it is. Some people I don't say, I don't, you know, don't keep up with or whatever. Hell, I was happy they graduated. They were probably happy that, you know, and all that. <coughs> Y'all, when that team right there came, when when Bruce and them came, Bruce, Steve Francis, Alex Scales. Y'all should have said the son of five scales. Yeah, be man, uh, Will Clay, man, uh, uh, all, all the boys that I name of what they do. Damn. Dude, Michael Stunny. I mean, I'm, I know I'm leaving out uh, uh, Jeremy. Huh? I know yeah. I'm leaving out one or two. Uh, uh, Sharuka. Sharuka? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Oh, we got to shout out to Clint Ray, man. What's up, Clint Ray? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about it. Yeah. Shout out to Roy Dela Cruz. Calvin uh, Bowles. Justin uh, Struve. Justin Struve. Clint Lake Finals, yeah. man. <laughs> the whole the whole squad, but man, when when those boys came, man, it was a it was a it became family fast for the most yeah. part. For the yeah. most, part. you yeah. know, but it, it it became family because man, we competed so hard against each other. Yeah, like man. they ain't care who old Mark's knee was. I ain't give it. I ain't care who they was. I, I I seen Bruce uh at uh, uh was it humble it was humble at the time right yeah I seen him in high school you know what I mean nobody knew who Steve Francis was Roy De La Cruz our point guard from New York you know so we just became family and 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 the deal was man we worked so hard our weekend I mean all week and we would go kick it so tough on the weekend and then get right back to the gym. And so our bond was our bond was crazy. So whenever we seen anybody from the other side, any other team, like man, it was just hell for them to pay, you know. Yep. So, so, so Omar, let's let's back up a little bit and, and shout out to Sid Coleman and Aaron Stott for watching us tonight for viewing. Um, I want to go through. So when you transition from Omar, so all state, you see, you're one of the top players in the state of Texas, and then you committed to University of Houston. Right. Talk to us a little bit about your experience as far as your how you were recruited and what you went through as far as recruiting from high school to college. Well, uh, I played AAU. Well, it was BCI, and then it transitioned over to AAU with my uncle um, from Austin, Texas. So, man, I would 
since the eighth grade, I would on Fridays catch the bus from um, Beaumont to Austin, Texas, get out there, practice everything, and catch the bus back on uh, Sunday. Had a little star, a little star, star phone, earphones, catch yeah. me a little seat, and just do my thing. And I was 14 years old traveling by myself like that. And wow. um, so I was like, you know, the commitment level, of course, times was different back then. And yeah. uh, get back to school, you know, do what I do. And the summertime come, uh, my mom would send me off to my uncle, which my uncle was a, a hardworking man that uh, drove trucks. Didn't have a whole lot, man, but he gave me so many morals and values that he readjusted my attitude. And man, you know, he was uh he was the cornerstone for me in basketball and the cornerstone of why I do what I do. Um he passed away with cancer going into my uh senior year and it really that really knocked me down because that was uh you know, that was everything. Man, I'm telling you, like we in Austin, Texas, Mom can't have an air condition, you know, and we was we was doing it like that, and I always promised them whenever I turned pro that I was going to, you know, do all that and then some, you know. So he was a big reason for me doing that, man. That's why I didn't play with Houston Hoops, and I didn't play with the big-name programs. I played with Austin Fast Break, reversible jerseys. But if you look at our roster, Calvin Davis, uh, uh, Chico Vasquez, Chris Clack, myself, right William Stringfellow, Yep. You know, I mean, we won a great, great American yeah. shootout, man. We beat a, we beat everybody, man. We was loaded, you know, and just a bunch of cats just out there trying to get. They used to call us the Fab Five, you yeah. know. So, um, that was that was that was that was the deal, man. Beaumont Westbrook was great to me. Uh, I didn't really learn how to appreciate my high school coach until years later mm. because I kind of felt like. I was being held back. I kind of felt like I could have done a lot of things that could have done a lot of things for other people. You know, we know back then we didn't know about prep school. You know, Steve, Steve, you know, uh, ended up going to Oak Hill. That's the first time I ever heard anything about any of that. You yeah, know, yeah. so uh, Jackson, man, say five. What's up, man? You know, and when I got to uh, my recruitment was crazy. You know. Uh, Oklahoma, U of H, USC, you know, all those type of schools. But the crazy part about it was everybody thought that I tapped out in high school. Nobody thought that I was going to be a high major Division One player. They all thought that I was just going to be a mid-major Division One player. That was the funny part. Mm. I think that was a mistake on their part. Um, absolutely. Because I'll transfer. I'll, I'll fast forward in to my freshman year in college, which is off, you know, your, your sophomore year at, at Jack. I was telling uh, my cousin, CJ, and, and, and my girl brother, Micah, man, I said, man, I've seen something I've never, ever seen before. We was up in Stevensville playing in Duco Jamboree. I said, I've never, ever seen this before, man. I said, man, it, it, it blew my mind. I said, I know I've seen some people that can really, really ball. Man, we go down the floor, 14, I think, or 15 trips straight, fed you every time and every time it was cash. I was like, God, damn it, man. Yeah. I ain't never seen nobody go to work like that, dude. I was yeah. like, that's crazy. He, we, you, I remember this still like it was yesterday. You ended that thing with 44 and 22. I was like, dude, I, I, that's the best I done seen in the post. I don't care. If I if it's another guy six nine six eleven I don't care about that I'll take that six six dude with that size eighteen shoes any day of the week I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> so, so, so so Omar tra- transitioning to so you 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 uh, ended up doing a stint at San Jacinto JUCO in Pasadena Texas uh, and so two teammates I want to ask you about obviously. Uh, the young man that's uh, right here below me in the in the in the, the celebrity squares here. Uh, <laughs> tell me about I'm, your thoughts on Bruce West, the person, as well as the player, and then also another teammate of yours who uh, we affectionately knew that became a local Houston Rocket that was your junior college teammate, Steve Francis, and him as a, a person and player as well. Okay, yeah. So uh, let me say this. I'm gonna tell you though. I'm gonna tell you that San Jacks. San Jack saved my life and my basketball career. 
Like, I'm going to tell you that before I get into Bruce, you know, the deal is, and I told the kids today, like, the biggest thing with me, I don't mind sharing my life. I think a lot of people hide, and then we don't tell kids the truth. And I tell all my kids because I don't want to see them make those same mistakes. And I made a, uh, you know, I was at U of H, man, just hanging out. And then the last time I hung out with, you know, with a, with a friend, don't call no name, you know, went to the library, was taking books. I didn't know nothing about that. You know, they come to our room, boom, get the books. Next thing you know, in handcuffs, and he said, man, you got to go. So I end up, I, I got, you know, went to, uh, they, they, they put us in, you know, well, jail, holding cell, whatever. So it was time for me to get out. You know, everything paid, it's time to go. And my mom made me sit in that thing for like a, another five extra days. She was like, wow. you, but at that time, man, you know, I just had a big head thing and like, Trouble ain't nothing because, like, you know, I ain't do it. So I'm like, man, y'all, you know, y'all tripping, you know. But at the same time, man, like, that thing had always stuck with me. And wrong place at the wrong time. And so that's how I ended up at San Jack. Cause my mom showed up with Coach G. She like, well, since you can't make intelligent decisions, this where you going. And when I got with Coach G and Coach Horse, because I couldn't let this go without shouting them out, man, because they really saved my life, man. Like, that – Wonderful ride, that story Bruce just told you about in Stevensville. But what we fell, what we didn't say is the time Coach G sent my tail home. Pat, he, he didn't care if we was undefeated. He didn't care if I was a high recruit. Go home, get your stuff, and get out of there. And I went home like, man, you need me. And I look at what I look up, man. Ain't none of them calling. Uh, they played the a game, they won. So now I'm sitting there thinking like, man, man, I really missed it. Hold on. So then, Coach Horseman called me. I ended up coming back, getting my head straight, and then, you know, we finished out the season, did what we had to do. But San Jack saved my life. Being around those guys and those different personalities saved my life. It forced me to be a leader. Now, answering the question about Bruce, man, you know, Bruce ain't really get a fast shake. You know what I'm saying? And I say that, I say that openly, you know. Now, at the time, you know what I'm saying? Now, this is the beautiful part about it. You know, he coming to my playoff game. I see his uh, beautiful daughter, my niece, man, the whole nine. My daughter see him in the Galleria, man. That's, you know, that's my daddy. That's, uh, you know, they know each other, taking pictures and everything. And when you see Bruce, of course, we older, you see growth. Because when we was in at San Jack, man, when I'm telling you, man, if he, if he get upset, take the bricks off the building, take the bricks off the building, you know. And, and one time I remember in high school, my brother them was playing against his old high school, and he kept saying, "Man, Snee, that ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work." I like Bruce, man. What? Oh, can we just watch the game? Then he went to the other side. Calvin said, "Oh, man, you know you gonna have to have deal with that when he get back to the school." I say, "Oh Lord, I said, I'll say I talk to him." And man, dude, I I never forget. I gotta tell this story, man. I'm coming out the locker room, and I don't know what. Well, I do know, I ain't going to say, dude said something that triggered my man, and I walk into the, in, I walk out there, and everybody else is out there. Bruce got the basketball rack, and he is playing dodgeball with dude. I mean, he is throwing them things 100 miles per hour. I'm saying, man, he look like all Hershey's out there. He chunking them things. So I go, I'm like, man, what's going on? And ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> And I'm like, man, what's going on? So I go out there. I'm like, B, nah, it's Nina. I'm like, B, come on, man, come on. I was, but the thing about it was, like, it was just that mutual respect. I was like, we can always, like, chop it up. Like, I understood where the frustration because, man, I'm good. I could have went anywhere. I came here, man. I'm not even getting a chance to play. And then when it's that case, when it's like that, man, you don't play with nobody like that. You know, so, but. To watch him today, to watch his growth, man, and to watch where he is, to watch where he is mentally and the things that he's doing, man, that's just a pleasure to see. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, yeah, that that's that's right there. Because, you know, we'll <laughs> – hey, he come to my playoff game, he came this year. Our girls just looking like, oh, man, we didn't mop them. I ain't worried about them. I'm going to laugh my own boy. I ain't worried about this game. So we sit up there and laugh like we was 18 again because that's what y'all should be doing, enjoying this. Like this yeah. don't happen all the time. 
We laughing about old stuff, you know. So you know, so that's the thing. We don't. And then uh, with 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 uh, with Steve, man, like, you know, I had Steve on his visit to San Jack. I was playing in the Fundy, right? And then um, Steve, he would always call me boss. That was that was his name, boss. Steve yeah. talking about it. Steve with my my man Dink, Big Dink, like six eight three twenty. He the one kind of showed me the DC crossover. Yeah. And then Steve, had, yeah, big thing, man. Show me. that's my brother, my big bro. Then when Steve came, he had me dribbling uh, around the school with a tennis ball. I'm hopping around the school with a tennis ball. I done bought some Timberlands, got Timberlands on with some dream, dream. <laughs> with, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to get this handle right. And then crazy thing, we play, we play Angelina. They got this cat that been running his mouth crazy. So I get an ISO. I get an ISO uh on the uh free throw line. And man, when I tell you, man, I crawl, man, I man, I took this, I mean, I took the chromosome out this cat. Boom, <laughs> we went to the cut, laid that thing, man, went crazy. And I wish I could have it on film right now, man. But but Steve was a cat. He was real, real different. You know, he yeah. you know, Steve had uh mom had passed, you know, um he came out there on a mission. Um, he didn't even start for us. You know, Roy De La Cruz started for us. Yep. And then, you know, I remember Coach Finch from Memphis came to watch us, and I think Justin, we were doing a layup drill. Justin missing blowing smoke and layup, but Justin had also towards ACL, and we didn't know. Well, yeah, Coach, got, Coach got us out there running in that Texas heat. I remember Steve stripped down to his boxes and running them bleachers in his boxes, and all you see is these calf muscles. So yeah. we playing Angelina. They got a seven-footer. So Coach from the sub was yeah. out. So he was like, boss, hey, give me the ball. So I take it out give it to him. Man, he weaved through traffic, get to the dot, yeah. and lean yeah. on those clubs. We, yeah. Man, I ain't. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, if you can get yeah. them on our tape, Ooh. hey, man, he Hey, and I know people had a lot to say, you know, in the agents, uh, you know, and all this and then and I, whatever. But I can say this, man, when I had my little time with the Rockets, he called, made sure I was straight. When I was in D.C., he called, made sure I was straight. About five years ago, he wrote a little, he wrote a, he, uh, uh, I ended up going out to Granny House. And uh, my first time seeing him in years, man, he wrote a check for my little program, my little basketball team sponsored their stuff. Um, man, and he'll call every blue moon, bro. Every yeah. blue moon, you yeah, know. So, you <laughs> yeah, every blue moon, man. So, now the love, the love amongst us, dog, was genuine, no matter who it was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, shout out to oh, y'all, yeah. Steve Francis, for that. Shout out to the the San Jack program, Omar. We we at this point we. We usually like to try to pay a few bills with a, and recognize a couple of our sponsors. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have a, a, a skit that we do. It's called One Other Other, One or the Other. So we want to get your feedback. Now, I will say this. Everybody on this panel may not agree with the feedback that you give and the answers that you give on One Other Other. So it ain't right. for... The faint of heart. We may disagree with you, and we may just cut you off from the show. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we gonna have some fun with it. All right. All right. All right. So first off, fellas, as far as our uh, sponsors are concerned, uh, I want to, uh, as we can see here flowing at the bottom of the screen, uh, everyone, please go out to www.cancerbikeride.org. Shout out yes, to sir. Buddy. Uh, Buddy Love is going to be riding uh, for cancer, uh, riding for donations, sponsorships, anything that we can give I mean, all of us, you know, have someone that we know, uh, whether it be a family member, friend, someone personally that has been impacted by cancer, uh, you know, in the words of, of, of others. And I've seen this promo. It's like F cancer. I've even seen the, the shirts and things that behind that. But again, www cancerbikeride.org. Buddy is going to be in a ride that's going to go from uh, Idaho to Utah, and he's prep preparing for that. So looking forward to that. Want to give him a shout-out. Want to make sure that we give a shout-out to uh, www, 
www.cancerbikeride.org. And you can also, I was at the site today, you can actually donate at the site. Exactly. In addition to that, one of our former guests, friends to the show, George Keel, want to give a shout out to his organization uh, and go to his website, www.keelcolancancer.org. Uh, George, again, appreciate you being on our show, talking yep. about your experience and what you had to deal with with losing a loved one in regards to cancer. Um, again, go out to his site and see the wonderful things that he's doing with his organization. Again, you can hit him at www.keelcolancancer.org colancancer.org shout out to last week's guest our homie representing humble texas down there in phoenix arizona bertrand berry uh you can right. go out to up, his man? website www.trainstationsaz.com again www.trainstationsaz.com uh bert is down there doing wonderful things with his program uh, what he does is he trains, you know, he's a former professional defensive lineman. He trains uh, individuals that are in high school about to transition to college that play the defensive line position, going over drills and different things and getting them prepared for that next level. He also works with college kids is getting ready to transition to the professional level. And in addition to that, he also works with the, uh, the young professionals as well as the veteran professionals as far as getting them to take their games to another level so that they can achieve the things that they want to achieve for themselves personally. Once again, exactly. go out and check out his website, www.trainstationsaz.com, the B train, check it out. B train workout. Last but not least, I want to give a shout out to my man over there at ABM insurance. That's my man, Phil Humber. Hit him up. 281-960-0763. Mr. Humble specializes in auto insurance. So don't be out there riding dirty. Get some insurance. Whether, you yeah. know, get some insurance for me. If you riding in the hoop, man, at least get liability. So if you hit me, I can get my stuff taken care of. <laughs> get you, wherever you lay your head, get some home insurance, condominium insurance, renters insurance. It don't matter. If you live with your parents, make sure your parents are insured. It doesn't matter. And then last but not least, Make sure that you insure your most valuable asset, which is your ass itself. Hey, and what exactly. I mean by that is get you some life insurance for your ass. Give me life a call. Insurance. Give him a call. Again, 281-960-0763. That's my man, the Rev, Phil Humber. Hit him up over there at ABM Insurance. All right, fellas. We finna jump into this one or the other. One or the other. Let's see what y'all got here. Let me see what we got. We're going to get this thing started. Take y'all back a little bit. Comedians. One of these comedians has to go. Looks like we got Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, Bernie Mac, Red Fox, Cat Williams, Martin Lawrence, Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle, and Chris Rock. Omar, we're going to start with you. Who has to go? Chris Rock. Chris Rock got to go? Off the, off the gravel. What you say, Rev? Who you got? Who got to go? Man. Eddie Murphy out of there to me. Eddie huh? Murphy out of there? Eddie Murphy out of there. I like huh? it. That's just hard. I had to pick somebody. So Eddie we got Murphy. Chris Rock out of there. Eddie Murphy out of there. What you got, beat up? Hey man, we wasn't teammates for nothing, man. So I'm gonna ride with my homie, man. Omar, listen, yeah, Chris Rock got to um, get them skates up under him. You gotta go. Right. And for me, y'all, I mean, good, good people turned into a good actor, but Kevin Hart got to go with me. I'm going with all the old school comics. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. it's 1996, and one of these albums have to have to. If you gotta. If you have to, if you can only have one album that you're going to play out of these, you're going to play this one. Which one you going to play? What you say, Rev? Man, I'm riding with that Maxwell. I'm playing that Maxwell and rolling. What? Right. What you got? What you got, beat up? Man, I'm going to burn that outcast up, oh, Jack. Yeah. All right. Oh, what you got? Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go, Machiavelli out the muscle, cause I I came back to San Jack with it, cause on my visit to Memphis, the boys stole it off the train, so I had it first. <laughs> I was I first in Texas with it, man. Yes, sir. 
I have to do eight. Come baby. with me. Hell, <laughs> Mary. Man, we got some people chiming in. So we got, yeah, I got to agree with you, Virgil. For me, the one I'm going to listen to is going to be that Machiavelli. I'm right there with Virgil and O on that. It's going to be Machiavelli for sure. You know, we got some folks chiming in with Nas, Machiavelli, Tupac. It seems like Machiavelli is the one for the day on this one as far as the, the albums that people going to play back in 96. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm transition to this one. And, oh, I'm going to start with you. Bonus, uh, it's the bonus, oh. So, oh, you, you, uh, Memphis, Memphis is where you was at, right? Right. That's where you, that's where you spent your last two years as far as playing collegiate basketball. Right. So, I'm gonna give you this one. One of them has to go out of these two gentlemen. Mm-hmm. We got <laughs> Jimmy Hardaway and we got Derrick Rose. Yeah. So, which one is that one gotta go? One got to go. You keep one. One you're going to take to the park and play with you, and the other one you're not. Oh, no, D. D. I, all due respect, I love it, man. D. Rose got to go. <laughs> <laughs> you say you got to have it, huh? Yeah, I rock with D. Rose tough, man, because, you know, that cat fell down and picked himself up, dog. I, I, I got nothing but, nothing but respect, but, man. We talking penny, man. Yeah, yeah. D. Doug, yeah. what you say on that one? Hey man, I, I love D Rose, but I, I was one cent all the way, man. It's one cent for me. I gotta go with Penny, man. Gotta go with Penny. Penny. What do you say about that, Real Penny? Penny. And and and, and, and Penny I'm with, stays, I'm with, D Rose gotta go. Yeah, Penny stays and D Rose gotta go. I have to agree with y'all on that one, fellas. Now yeah, I'm a you know, we can all jump in on this one, but again, I got to shout out the Golden Triangle. Now, this one is not necessarily right in Beaumont, but it's pretty close to home. And this might be the most challenging got to go of the day. And, oh, I'm going to start with you on this one. Pimp C or Bun B, which got to go? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you say one of them got to go? One of them got to go. Pimp got to go. Ain't no way. You, you, hey, the underground you kings, know, you got to split them up right man. now. Got to split them up. <laughs> All right, man. I, 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 I'm going to say it like this for me. Because I'm, 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 when it comes down to this stuff right here, I, I like lyrics like a mug, man. Pimp C Swagger was through the rule before his time. But when yeah. he I, I got to go, I go, I got to go bun, man, because I just like, I just like the lyrics. Uh, I hear you. Have a look. Shout out to Mike. Virgil, he says Bun B. Got to go. Mm-hmm. But we also got a bye-bye Bun B. Okay, the, the, the viewers is rolling with Pimp C. What you say, B-Dub? Oh, we. I, I, all I remember, I'm still Pimp C. So what mm-hmm. the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm going with Pimp, man. I'm going with Phil. You're going to keep oh, nah. I'm going to go to oh, nah. no, what I, I love Phil, but I'm going to ride with Pimp. Pimp, because Pimp has more of my mentality, man. You know what I mean? So, I, I got to ride with Pimp. I just said it. Hold up. Know what I'm <laughs> talking about. Man, <laughs> give us some of that Pimp, man. Where that Pimp at? Smoke some bitch. Hey, hold up. 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 Hey, we got, we got to send a, send a shout out, man, to Harden Jefferson's head coach, Mike Fogo, who just chimed in on us, man. Mike, how you doing? Hope you and your family are doing well in the Golden Triangle, homie. Absolutely, man. And it's a perfect transition to – um I want to show you all something as we transition into Sour Lake, Texas on that. Uh, give me just a moment, fellas. You know, this is normally Buddy's thing, so y'all bear with me as I, I, I make this transition over to uh, showing us a little something here that I got teed up. Okay. Oh, 
fucking on with shit. This is Matt. This is Hart Jefferson. They're decent at basketball. They're really awesome. Introduce yourself. Uh, McKenna Henry, shooting guard, senior. Riley Worth, small forward, senior. Kendall Sneed, point guard, freshman. Molly Beavers, forward, sophomore. Ashton Jackson, point guard, junior. All right, Ash, we'll start with you. Last year, good year. Y'all get to the regional finals. What are y'all bringing this year? This year, we're bringing a lot more intensity. Uh, we're closer as a team, so of course, you know, that goes great on both ends on the court and on off the court. Um, I would say that this team brings a lot more focus and fire to the game. Freshman year, great. Now you're a sophomore. What have you feel like you're more comfortable? You got more experience. What have you improved on over year to year? We've learned to bring more energy instead of being so shy and scared and selfish and we're a lot closer. Perfect. Okay. So, freshman season. How's it gone so far? It's a lot to put on a freshman to play varsity on a really good team. What's it been like? It's been it's been a very big learning curve coming from the eighth grade. So, I just hope to, that my teammates, I have some really good teammates that help me get through every game, and it's nothing I can ask for anything better. We got the grandmas at the end. Hmm. Let me, let me be the first to say. I know that's his team, and I've, I've watched him, you know, enough to say this here. His child wasn't no freshman last year, man. He didn't play like one, you know, at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, outstanding, outstanding group of young ladies, man. I, I was, I was really proud to see them do what they did last year, uh, and look forward to them doing even more this year. So, yeah, so, that's great. So, so, Omar, you're the assistant coach, head coach there at Hart Jefferson. Uh, shout out and congrats to your team for making it to the state finals uh, last year. Um, when you see that video and you look at those five, as well as the rest of the team, and especially the young lady that was in the middle there, which is your daughter, tell me how does that make you feel? Uh, man, it's uh, – at some point in time last year, man, I, I just I, – I had to sit down and I just became a fan. You know, um, you know, so, you know, here's the deal. When I finished working, um, when I finished hooping, when it dried up, I went by two years, man. I, it was like life was like fighting Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? And getting hit with every. And my son in 2015, he went to state with Beaumont Ozan. And, you know, I was volunteering at the time or whatever, man. So my, my whole dream was to be a hometown hero, come back to Beaumont. Coach one of the high schools, do my thing. Shout out David Snead, by the way, man. Yeah, man, you know, my, that's my first one, man. And um, things don't always work out the way you envision it, you know. And so I'm walking around Vegas, uh, and, uh, man, Mike gives me a phone call and asks me, man, you want to coach? I was like, yeah. Didn't even know what I was making, didn't know what I was coaching. Then I end up going there, and I look at the team like, man, I in the hell. Dude, dude, like, I, girl, what is going on? I never coached girls. And then these girls, oh, man, what's up? So anyway, he allowed me the freedom, right? So make a, so fast forward to the question. Man, it made me feel like – it made me feel good, man. You know, through our freshman mistakes early, like, you know, we was going to play through it, but – Number three, the girl you see, number three, which is Ash, that's the, I would do commit. I was, you know, I've been training her since the fourth grade. And, uh, yeah, man, she's uh, probably been McDonald's All-American, man. And um, when COVID hit, you know, we had access to a gym. So I did it old school, man. We was two a days. Waking up early in the morning, getting an early grind, get something to eat, chill, come back. And I had them two going at it. Every day, every day, you know, and so go to game five, Ashley gets in foul trouble. Oh, yeah. And everybody on pause, like, 
oh man, what we gonna do? Kendall and my other girls, India, yeah. India, uh, uh, Jalen, uh, uh, Jada, you know, they all played together in the summertime. And it was like they they put the they they, they put the weight of the world. Come on, let's go, y'all. We good. Hey, we got you. Boom. We get the game six, the state semifinal game. That's what that's what that's what Bruce came out to. Hey man, I absolutely just sat there. The ass filed out that game. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. just sat there and was like, okay, I'm a fan now. Yeah. I'm a fan of Kendall Sneed. Yeah. <laughs> If, it, and it's crazy how history repeats itself because when you say, hey, oh, when you scored them 32 points back then, whoop de whoop, I told you, like, yo, I, I didn't know I was just hooping. Well, yeah. he was just hooping. Wasn't no agenda. Not worried yeah. about getting hurt. Man, I'm going all out because this is what I, you know, I was taught to win at all costs. Game yeah. five against uh, Waco La Vega, or four against Waco La Vega, Ash got in foul trouble because she's a big guard. She's ahead of her time. So she don't get she don't get refereed like a she get like she get she get refereed like she gotta dumb her game down sometimes. Yeah. And uh, we like oh hell hey she put us on her back first half like no other dude. So I just became a fan man. And I was extremely extremely proud of her and the things that she accomplished. You know she goes into the summer. We with Safar. You know, uh, the coach, he, he, you know, he got his views of how she's supposed to be played, whatever. And the, the, the deal is that uh, I wouldn't let her tap out because I was like, you know, your freshman year of college, if the coach could be that way, you might go in there as a backup. So as much as she was uncomfortable, that uncomfortable stage is what's going to take her over the top. So, Omar, I, I know you, you had a really close relationship with your college coach at Memphis, Tick Price. Um, has there been anything that you've learned from Tick Price when you played for him or maybe even some of your coaches in your 15-year professional career that you've been able to take what they taught you and you use that now as you're coaching high school sports? The closest coach that I got a relationship with is, is Scott Janander. Who's okay. Yeah. San okay. Yeah. Coach Price is a, is, a, is, a, is a man that I highly respect. Um. Coach Price, he got me back in school when it was time for me to graduate. When I finished and I didn't know what I had to do, I had to go back to school and graduate. Coach Price taught me about professionalism. You know, he taught me how he taught me how to speak. You know, he taught me how to survive. You know what I mean? Um, he taught me how to accept the word no. You know, because I heard it several times. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, on Coach Price when he left Lamar. And I was actually going to Augusta for Nike Nationals. We had a long overdue conversation right there at the gas station. I'm sorry, at the car wash. Because, you know, he coached at Lamar. And you would just you would think that it would be a no-brainer that I would be at Lamar as an assistant. Yeah. You know, at least player development or something. Because I'm developing. I develop a lot of kids in this area. You know, Beaumont is a town like, like other places. People want to take credit for this. They want to hate. And that was the biggest thing about Beaumont with the powers that be. It's not the city itself. I love my city. But the powers that be, they think that they can. I'm not a cat that you can box in. Bruce will tell you that. You tell me to go this way. You know what I'm saying? You want it this way. Now it's that way. Yeah. That's why I call myself when the playoff time come. That's why I call myself. I don't call myself Coach O. The girls don't call me Coach O. They call me Young Marlo. Yeah. Because that's a Young Marlo quote off the wire. I'm not you. You ain't helped me make now lay up none of that. Y'all laughed at me when I was doing it in the seventh, eighth grade, right? Then I became a pro, and now you think you gonna tell me how to spend my money? No, nah, man. I put it back into my community, and I wouldn't change that. You know, so like I say, Coach Price taught me how to be a pro. He taught me how to play uh, with a different type of vision. You know, he taught me how to see the world different because he had a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of quotes, and he he's big on making you think. So like I told you, I'm 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 comprised of a whole bunch of different spirits. That's that that's that spirit that he put into me, you know. But most times when you go to school, you're gonna nine times out of ten be closer to the assistant coach because the head coach got to be the umbrella for everything. So at that time, I was I was probably closer to Johnny Jones, that's the head coach at TSU. 
But yeah. once again, the thing is, I'm right here in Beaumont. Everybody know what I do. They know how good I am at it. But yet still, you don't get that love that you think you're going to get. And I'm just being real right now. You know, you but don't get I'll, that love that you think you're going to get. And the I'll, crazy I'll, part. I'll, huh? I'll say this to you not to cut you off, man. In due time, homie. In due oh, time. Oh, yeah. Man, we, I, I, keep doing what you're doing and do time. Yeah, I stopped you know, worrying about that a long time ago. But you know, the thing that I'm saying right now, because it's a kid out there getting recruited, it's a kid out there being told this and told that. And I tell kids all the time, when you're being recruited, man, don't worry about the long baggage shot. See, they sold me on Memphis State when they when he pulled up the penny highlights. Yeah. Long baggy gray shorts in the night. I was sold in, you know, yeah. but what about the alumni? Man, there's nobody yeah. that I could call in Memphis that could get me a job. Nobody looked my way when it's come down to get a job, a basketball that, job. That's funny, though, man, because I've heard your name mentioned for the, for the women's program now, for the women's basketball program now. There was a friend of mine who was the trainer. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, he was our a manager at the time who was now over the rebounding club. Who, who just threw it out there because you got to remember we don't we didn't have social media now so you could throw a name out there in social media and they could just Slow take down. off but any powers that be no because you got to remember i'm from texas and i played in memphis that's a rarity oh, you yeah. know so my point is when they say family yeah well how deep you, is the family anybody recruit my daughter you got to have an alumni i got to know what's going to go on after basketball because basketball is just a vehicle yeah, you know, so when we start talking about that close stuff, Jananda saved my life. He saved, he saved me. So, oh, we for the sake of time, man, we about to end up getting out of here, man. It's it's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, last thing I want you to to tell us about, I know you, uh, you know, in addition to coaching over at Harden Jefferson and Sour Lake, I know you've done some stuff with your AU program. Uh, tell us about anything that we're unaware of that maybe you've got going right on right now that you could promote to our viewers or promote here. It is what it is tonight. Well, man, when I when I came home, uh, like I said, my uncle I always promised him that I would do it and reach back. So I started a program called SBG Silverback Gorillas. You know, uh, I had a bunch of uh, I can't say inner city kids. You know, everybody all star is elite is man. I had to get these kids something to believe in. So our logo was the gorilla, basketball is the concrete jungle, and so that's that was the whole thing behind that. And uh, we've had I've had a lot of good talent come out. I've had a lot of kids that you know play, for me. then they have to you know may might have to go to the hoops at the end just to get on the bigger stage on the EYBL because you know we're we're independent. We like red shop. We're a major independent. You know that's that's where we at with it. But like the kid from Port Arthur, Junior Lofton, that just won um. Uh, he had a lot of tech. They just won the uh, gold medal. They yeah. had him in the six from the sixth to eleventh grade. Fat kid, Kahoot. Ain't too many people, you know, were thinking about him. Now he all world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you see it, you see it. Um, I had the pleasure of coaching the EYBL 17U girls uh, this summer. We lost the championship uh, to Cal Stars by five. Uh, I was on ESPN too. Um, mic up coaching in. Um, I only had the team for a month. I had to take over for a guy. Um, that's what I got, man. You know, and right now I got uh, I'm with, you know, I'm with HJ, man, trying to chase this ring. And then after this season, man, we're gonna see what's happening. Appreciate it, man. We we really love it. Hey, to our viewers out there, uh, we wasn't able to for the sake of time jump into a lot of his career at Memphis State. All Conference USA while in Memphis State, like I said, walking double double. Omar Steed had an outstanding career there. Um, you know, Tennessee basketball player of the year. Uh, yeah. You know, then transitioned over to 15 years professional career, played in many different countries. Uh, started off in Columbia to just name one of the many countries that he was in. Had a stint with the Houston Rockets, as he spoke of earlier. Man, it's been a, a, pleasure a pleasure to be able to talk to you tonight, man. And we're so happy exactly. that you were jo able to join us on the It Is What It Is podcast. Exactly. For sure, man. Hey, Bruce, make the phone call. Bro. I'm coming, man. No matter where we are. That's how that's 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 brotherhood. Hey, we definitely would like to get you back, man. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I love to come back. We, we got more to talk right about. Right out. Oh, yeah. Plenty to talk hey. about. 
Hey, real quick, one question before you go. You're going to the blacktop. You got to take four NBA, four current NBA players with you to the blacktop. Who you taking with you? Oh man, Durant. We going to we going to the hood in Beaumont. Oh, to the hood. Okay. To the hood. But see, I got. I'm gonna talk about who been there already. Durant. I got to take Durant because he didn't been he didn't play. Uh, crazy as it may sound, I'm about to take hard because I'm gonna need me a score, and then I gotta give me a I gotta give me a show enough bruiser. And I don't really know what it is. Now, it's got to be current. Current. I ain't. I need Zach Randolph. Well, if I can't get Zach, I'm going to have to go green. At least I know he's going to get it going. And then uh, at the end of the day, I'm going Dane. I need Dane. So right, we got Dame Dollar, James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Draymond Green. Outstanding. Hey, yeah, look, give me give me four young ladies you're going to take to the black tie with you. Current. It don't matter whether professional, high school, or college. K- Kendall Sneed. Aslan Jackson, Molly, uh, Molly Beavers, India McMahon, Jay, Jay Pleasant, McKen- yeah, AJ all day. Shout out to Hard yeah, Jumps and Ladies Basketball. Real, right, get us on out of here, man. Oh, man. What time is it? Oh, oh shit, man. 12 o'clock. Oh, shit. Hey, man, y'all know that's been our time on the Is What It Is show. And big shots out to the big homie, Omar Steve. That boy, he just let us know. He just got it right up out the mud. Yes, sir. Beaumont Fine is in the building. Hey, man, until next time, y'all know what it is. It is what it is, and that's just the way it's going to be. Y'all ain't got to get up out of here. Y'all ain't got to go, but just get the hell up out of here. Jimmy J, release the people. Oh, man.